Welcome to Specific Love. With all the new DIYers joining the community, I feel it's very important to talk about the basics of tools. So, let's talk about the jigsaw. Now when it comes to jigsaws, you can get a corded version or a cordless version. The corded is great because you can run it all day long and whatever project you need, you don't have to worry about anything dying on you. But if you're gonna take it out to the middle of nowhere or maybe you're working on a house that doesn't have electricity, definitely you'll want the battery operated. Now on the bottom of the jigsaw, this has many names. It can be called the shoe, the foot plate, or just the base. It's what glides on the surface to give you a nice clean cut. Now if you look over at this jigsaw, I have it on a block, and that's because your blade sits below your plate here. So wherever you store this, you're gonna have to remember there's a blade sticking down unless you take the blade off every time. Now on most modern base plates, you do have the ability to pivot this, but they're different on each jigsaw. This one right here, you actually have to unscrew it before you can turn it, and then you have to re-screw that down. On this one over here, it actually has a lever you can pull out and pivot it. Now having the ability to angle this base plate is a nice option. But now that I think about it, I really don't remember the last time I've actually angled this to make a cut because that's not normally what I'd use it for. Now to add and remove the blade, it really just depends on the make and model. For example, this one right here goes up and down and this one right here actually goes side to side. This really doesn't matter as long as it holds the blade nice and tight. Now on most modern jigsaws, they'll have what they call an orbital option, which it just affects on how aggressive the blade will cut. Each one can vary differently. For example, this one, you have to adjust it back here and on this one you can adjust it on the side. Now another adjustment you need to know about is the rate of speed of your blade. In other words how fast it's going to go up and down. Sometimes those adjustments are right here on the trigger and sometimes it'll be in another location for example right here on the top. Now of course depending on the jigsaw you buy there could be other options. For example on this one there is a little bit of a light there as you can see right there. That'll allow you to see exactly where we're cutting a little bit easier. Some other options may even be dust collection, but I normally don't even use this. I just clean up afterwards. And now here are a bunch of tips to make that jigsaw work even better for you. Now whenever you're using a jigsaw, you have to remember that the blade has a really long stroke when it goes up and down. So you have to make sure there's plenty of clearance under whatever you're cutting. For example, I have a two by here and a half inch piece of plywood and this still almost touches this table. So make sure you have plenty of clearance under here so you don't break the blade or just mess up your jigsaw. Now I mentioned earlier that the blade can have an orbital option. When it's in normal state, it just goes up and down. But when I change the setting, you'll notice not only is it going up and down, but it's going back and forth. You can see it a little more aggressive up here. Now doing that will make a much faster, more aggressive cut, but it'll also be a lot rougher. So if you want it to be a nice clean cut, I'd probably suggest just leaving it on zero. Now the jigsaw can cut wood, but it can also cut metal, but that really depends on the blade. Now let's look at the blades. The one on the right over here, you'll notice that the teeth on it are very aggressive and wide apart. And if you look at this one over here, you'll notice that the teeth are real close together and almost hard to see. The one on the right is a wood cutting blade and the one on the left is a metal cutting blade. Definitely don't get these mixed up when you're trying to cut metal. Now as I mentioned earlier about the knob to adjust the rate of speed of the blade going up and down, some models actually have an additional feature built into the trigger. The harder you pull the trigger, the faster the blade will go. Watch. This is great whenever you're making your cuts because you can adjust on the fly. Now one thing you need to remember about the speed. Whenever you're cutting a softwood, say like pine, you should run this at a fast rate of speed. Whenever you're cutting a hardwood, maybe like maple or cherry, there is a good chance you might burn the wood. So usually you need to cut it at a much slower speed. Now when you're cutting with your jigsaw, it's a good habit to only provide light pressure going forward. If you do it real heavy and push real hard, there's a good chance that you're gonna break your blade and just overly strain your motor. So just remember, ease into those cuts and let your blade do the cutting. Now jigsaws are probably best known for their curved cuts and their round cuts that most other tools can't even come close to doing. But there is a downside. When you're cutting these out, you need to make sure you're not pushing side to side on your jigsaw. If you do that, the blade down here is gonna deflect. That's because it's only supported on one side. So whatever side is being pushed on, that's gonna cut further in and further out at the bottom. So therefore, if by chance you are pushing one side or the other, your cuts are gonna be one shape on the top and one shape on the bottom. So just be careful, don't do side to side. Sometimes when you're trying to make curved round cuts that are a little bit tight, you can't get the blade to go all the way around those curves. 
In these cases, you need to take the blade and do what they call relief cuts, which are just some notches you put into it with the blade, then you can come back with the other side and trim those off. Then you can go back and make sure everything is cleaned up. Now with the design of the jigsaw and the blade going in an up and down motion, there's always a chance that this blade gets hung on something on whatever you're cutting or maybe just below it. Now whenever that happens, there's a good chance that your jigsaw is going to try and jump up on you, like just about like so. So whenever you're cutting, you need to make sure you keep a nice firm downward pressure. Not real hard, but enough firm downward pressure so if it starts to jump up, you can counteract that and keep it from damaging whatever you're cutting. Now whenever you grab a jigsaw or buy a brand new one, there's a very good chance it's only going to cut in an upward fashion. There is an exception to that, I'll explain more about that in a little bit. Now because it's only going to cut in an upward fashion, you need to make sure that your piece, your project that you're working on, is going to have the nice side on the bottom. Because that's where the nice sharp cut is going to be. On the top, there's always a good chance you might have a little bit of tear out, so be careful with that. Place the nice side down. So why does a jigsaw usually only cut in an upward fashion? That's because it's trying to counteract this blade as it's pulling the material up. It pulls it up against the base and that keeps everything from bouncing all around. Now since a jigsaw usually only cuts in an upward fashion, yes that can be challenging on some of your cuts. So let me show you how you can reverse this so it actually will cut on the downstroke. Now this is a pretty easy swap over. It all really depends on the blade you have. Most blades you'll find will be in an up cut, just like this blade is here. But if you notice, the teeth on this one are actually opposite. This is a downward cutting blade. So if you need to cut in a downward stroke, just make sure you get the appropriate blade. Now do keep in mind, if you're going to be using a downward cutting blade, there's a very good chance that your jigsaw is going to want to jump up on you a lot more. So just be prepared for that. Now which kind of blade does your jigsaw take? Now, that's a good question. Now there are two main types. You'll have a T-shank, which kind of looks like a T at the top, and then you'll have a U-shank that kind of looks like a U at the top. Now, I personally would prefer the T-shank, and that's because most manufacturers have moved over to that design, because it seems to be a lot more sturdy, and it's a lot easier to put in your saw and take back out. Watch, ready? Out, back in. Literally took it out and put it back in in what, two seconds? Real simple, and it's nice and firm in there. You don't have to worry about that falling out. So if you already have a jigsaw, use whatever blade type is designed for it, but if you don't, buy one that uses a T-shank. And since we're talking about blades, you should also know about TPI, or teeth per inch. In most cases, the higher the tooth count, the nicer and cleaner the cut will be. Now let's look at the blades. This one has about seven teeth per inch, and therefore it is a fast cutting blade, but it won't necessarily be clean. This one has about 11 teeth per inch, which means it'll definitely be a lot cleaner of a cut and still be decently fast. And this one has about 13 teeth per inch. It's more of a scrolling saw. In other words, it won't be as fast, but it should be a nice clean cut. Now let's say you're working on one of your projects and you need to cut out a hole or a square or something somewhere in the middle of your project. A jigsaw is great for that but you need to have a starter hole. So just get a standard drill with a bit that's just a little bit bigger than the blade you're gonna use, and you want to drill a starter hole. And then you can insert your jigsaw and cut that shape out. And if by chance you're cutting out a square or a rectangle, an easiest way to do it is to put holes in opposite corners and then just cut going in an outward fashion and it'll make that real quick. Now let's say you need to cut out a piece in the middle of your project, but you don't have a drill bit to get everything started. There is a way to actually start it with your jigsaw. But just keep in mind, what I'm about to show you, there's a good chance if you don't do this correctly, you will break your blade and possibly mess up your project. Now whatever material you're going to be cutting, make sure it is clamped down because you're going to need both hands on your jigsaw when you're doing this. Also make sure you have plenty of room underneath it so you don't hit anything. Now position the blade about where you want it. Now keep in mind, this is not going to be a perfect cut, it's just a starter cut. We're going to get this blade in motion up to speed. And once it is moving, I'm going to slowly start getting it closer and closer to the wood where it starts contacting it. Once it starts to contact the wood, I'm then going to pull it forward a little bit as I try and lower it down. Let's watch. Now on closer inspection, you can tell this is definitely not a perfect cut, but just remember, this is just a starter hole without a drill bit. 
Now whenever you're using your jigsaw, you need to keep in mind how smooth the base is on it. Because this right here is going to be moving back and forth on your project. In my case here, this has a plastic cover which stays pretty clean and pretty smooth all the time. On some of the older jigsaws, you'll find some that just have metal there, no extra protection. On occasion, you may need to take some real fine grit sandpaper and go across this to make sure there's no burrs or anything sticking up from all the times you've set it down. Now if by chance you don't have sandpaper or you don't have time to do that, you can always take some painter's tape and do a couple strips on both sides and that should be a temporary little buffer there so that you can use your jigsaw without it having to scratch up your piece. Whenever you get done cutting a project, make sure that the blade comes to a full stop before you pull it out. If you don't, there's a very good chance you're going to gouge your project and possibly even bend or break your blade. Now jigsaws are great for curved and rounded cuts, but anytime you need to make a long straight cut with one, I'd suggest getting a straight edge, whether it's a speed square or maybe just a long level. Then take it and clamp it down so it doesn't move and use it as the guide to run your jigsaw along. Now whenever you're cutting a line from the outside, if you start the blade before you touch the wood, there's a good chance it's going to vibrate and be a little bit hard to start that line correctly. In these cases, I've found that it's better if you actually take the blade and gently put it right up against the wood, I mean just gently, then we're going to start this blade real slow and as we start to go in, we'll speed up the blade. Here, watch this. There we go, right on the line. Now as mentioned before, jigsaws can cut metal, but we weren't talking about sheet metal, for example, this is some copper flashing. If I was to try and cut this with a jigsaw, even with a metal cutting blade, there's a very good chance that this edge is gonna be all jagged and warped and just messed up. Now to help prevent that, if you take two pieces of real thin plywood and you want to sandwich that metal in between these pieces of wood, yes, it will probably take a good bit longer to cut out that metal, but now you don't have to worry about all those jagged edges. Now when you're cutting with a jigsaw, you are limited to how thick you should be able to cut. When you're cutting softwoods, I'd limit it to about an inch and a half. And when you're cutting a hardwoods, don't go more than about three quarters of an inch. In those cases, you should be able to cut whatever you need. And whenever you're using a jigsaw, always remember to use some ear protection and some eye protection because safety is always first. Now if by chance you know of any other tips for the jigsaw, please put those in the comments below because we want to help out as many people as possible. Now right over here, I'm going to have a playlist with a bunch of other tips for tools, so make sure you check those out as well. Otherwise, get out in your shop and have fun building. Let's try it again. It's... No. Let's try it again. The Joe's... Now having... Now having...